10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good afternoon, good afternoon, beautiful people. Happy New Year. Here we go at 2021. Can you guys believe that? We have already blew off an entire year. And uh, I don't know, for many of us, it went unprecedented. For many of us, it went with a lot of activity or a lot of bad stuff. So whatever the situation is, let's get this party started. And stay tuned because today we're going to be talking about how to start off the new year on the right foot, how to plan ahead, and how to get excited about what's about to come. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way. Well, there you go. There you have it. I hope that pumped you up and you're ready to rock and roll this next 30 minutes with me. Um, well, today we don't have a guest, but we do have a great topic. So hopefully you're able to contribute to this topic. Um, and if you're watching and you like to share this, please share, 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 whether you're a YouTuber or a Facebooker or whatever other live stream platform you're watching. I want to welcome you. I want to wish you a happy 2021. And let's get this party started, right? So um, many of you who obviously always watch this show, you guys know that uh, the purpose of this show is to, uh, well, to inspire you, right? Whether it is because you're meeting one of my guests or whether it is because we have a, a topic that's worth talking about, the point of the topic is always for you to get inspired. And lately, with all the things that have been happening in our lives and, and, and our world, you know, that's kind of harder and harder to do. Um, if you're in that, uh, I don't know, five, seven percent of society who has not been impacted at all by what's been happening in this last past year. Um, well, I, you know, I want you to take a moment and count your blessings and uh, know that uh, you're only a very limited few. And so you should be very lucky. You should be counting your blessings and you should be um, just thanking, thanking life for allowing you to go unprecedented, right? So, you know, as we talk about this next subject and um, and we get going with our topic, I want to let you know that, um, first of all, I am very grateful for a huge year worth of teachings, right? 2020 was definitely not a year that I like to ever repeat, but it was definitely a year of a lot of learning. And with that comes a lot of growth. So, um, you know, how, how do we start? How do we start? I know a lot of people ask me all the time, how do you stay so positive? How do you, you know, continue to move forward? A lot of people think I have no adversities, uh, which they're completely wrong. Um, and a lot of people just go, you know, you're just a happy person. And that's why you can keep up with um, whatever life decides to hit you with. And, um, you know, today I humbly tell you that that is not accurate at all. Um, but there is one thing that defines me and one thing that, that uh, defines me that has helped me go through all these years with so many adversities in my life is the fact that I am conscious about I'm the only one that can fix 
uh, my own problems. And, and by that, I'm not saying that other people don't help because everybody has their purpose in one's life. Uh, whether you have a best friend, whether you have a coworker, whether you have a, a, a family member that uh, is your medicine to kind of help you through, everybody serves their purpose. And for that, we should be eternally grateful to have those type of people in our lives. Um, but the one thing that that you should know if you're going through any adversity is that you are the solution to your problem. And it starts with the mental, you know, the mental issue. It starts with the mental capacity to move forward and, uh, and decide where you want to go next. So, well, we're going to say hello to a couple people. Um, and uh, with that, hi, Emma. Emma from Las Vegas, right? Um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too, and your beautiful family. I've been watching um, your photos through the holidays, and that's been kind of a lot of fun, you know, just watching what how people were able to pivot, right, and, and adjust to what this you know, pandemia brought us or this pandemic era um, brought us and we had to readjust, right? Um, hello to Frank Ingram. Thank you, Frank, for watching. As usual, I um, appreciate you guys' support, whoever's here. And of course, um, you know, our Kalmar friend uh, all the way from Ontario today. Thank you for watching. So, we're going to get going with this. We're going to get going with, of course, what our topic is. And um, our topic is the start of a new year. How does one start a new year? Whether you're in that, you know, 60% of society who has been extremely impacted by uh, this last year events, or whether you're in that, you know, 30% that's, kind of like, ah, you know, I, I've been kind of hit, but I haven't really been hit. Or you're in that 10% who has not suffered at all. How do you start? What are the differences to start uh, a brand new year? And how do you plan ahead? And how, how do you start with um, what is to come, right? Because we're living unprecedented times, and we don't know what's to come, truly, we have to kind of plan ahead as if, you know, not much is going to happen, right? So we have to kind of have a plan A and maybe potentially a plan B. And I get it. All you entrepreneur brothers and sisters out there that go, no, 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 you don't create a plan B. You only go with plan A and you make plan A work. However you see it, um, we have to understand that different personalities carry you to act in different ways. You may or may not agree with me, and that's okay. Uh, but I'm only going to speak from experience. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19 years old. That's many, many, many moons. Um, so with that said, I can tell you that what I'm about to show you has always worked for me. One way or another, it has always worked for me to get out of whatever it is that I'm in. So a lot of us tend to forget when we're doing good, when we're, when, when we're having a lot of abundance or when we're having a lot of success, we tend to forget what are the main things we got to do to keep the course, right? But when adversity starts hitting, that's when we start pivoting. That's when we start thinking, okay, the, the true us comes out is what I'm saying. So, so with that said, I want to share with you what keeps me going forward. And we'll, we'll dwell on those little, um, you know, four or five things. But it, there is five things that I do on a normal basis to keep me going, to keep me focused and to keep me fulfilling each and every stage of my life. So, um, you know, we it all starts with a dream. And I know that a lot of people have lost their dreams. I know that it's hard for people to even dream. 
I had, you know, I was, I was um, having a meal with my girlfriend yesterday and we were talking about this, ex, uh, this exact subject, you know, dreams, just people have lost their dreams. People don't, you know, dreams are supposed to be like magnificent. They're supposed to be out of this world. That's what imagination is for. That's why God or, or whatever you believe in or the universe or the world gave you that capacity of dream. And you're supposed to dream big. You're not supposed to dream, oh, I want to get my, uh, you know, electric bill paid. That's not a dream. That's an execution. That's a, you know, that's a to-do. Um, you're supposed to dream big on how do you want your life to look like? You know, a lot of us have huge dreams. If your dream isn't bigger than life, then you're not dreaming big enough. You're not setting yourself up for a wonderful future or a wonderful opportunity or potential. So with that said, you know, what is your dream? Have you written down your dream for this year? And again, you can dream on an annual basis. You can dream on uh, a quarterly basis. You can dream on uh, a monthly basis, a day basis, an hour basis, whatever. I like to dream and I like to set my dream out for the year. Obviously, I have a life fulfillment dream. And that changes um, with the years, it changes with the adversity, it changes with the opportunity. But um, how do I approach my dream? Well, in 2021, you know, I, I took the whole last five year, five days of the year to just write down my dream, to write down what is it that I would like to see in my life for this 2021. Now, Nothing tells you that you're going to fulfill it, but you got to start dreaming it. You got to start envisioning it. You got to start putting it out there, manifesting it, you know, putting it on your dream board, putting it in your face. So it's there and it's active and it's making you have a conscience of how now you're going to put a vision together, right? So based on your dream, uh, it's one thing. But now let's put the vision of what that dream looks like on paper, what that dream looks like on an execution plan, right? So the vision is what comes after my dream. So once I'm, I'm out there setting my big dreams and my dreams could be, I don't know, curing cancer, right? Something so huge and magnificent and, and, and disruptive as curing cancer. You know, um, because of what I do, usually my dream is, you know, changing financial illiteracy, whether it is to a group of people, whether it is to a culture, whether it is to, um, you know, uh, friends and family, that could be a dream. Uh, maybe a dream is, you know, for all, all those people that do not own a home, that have never owned a home. Maybe a huge dream is to own your home this year. But don't worry about how to get it done at this point. Worry about what you're dreaming and what you want in your life, because then we're going to put the vision of what that looks like. What are things that you need to do and what are things that you need to potentially reverse engineer, right, from that dream backwards to see what you need to get done um, to do that? Um, and then, of course, I'm going to kind of look at, um, you know, some of the messages as they come along. Um, Thank you. Thank you for that message, uh, Frank. So Frank, it says, I love how you mentioned that some people in your circle can be your therapist, your mentor, your encourager, all at the same time. And that is so true. That is why you have to be careful, right, on the kind of on the on the people that you bring to your circle. Um, I have one rule and one rule rule only. If you're the kind of person who 
um, you know, every time I talk to you, you're bringing me worries and you're bringing me negativity and you're, you're, you're changing my mentality on what I truly believe and my core values are, most likely you're going to be that kind of friend who's going to be pushed outside of the circle. Um, I always talk about it. It doesn't matter if it's your family member. It doesn't matter if it's your partner. It doesn't matter if it's your child, your best friend. If they are damaging to your circle, you're the only person that can protect your circle. So have no mercy on those people and cut them out of your circle. That doesn't mean get them away from your life. That just means if you talk to them every day, maybe you're not going to be talking to them every day. If you're asking them for advice, maybe you need to quit asking them for advice. They're not the right person um, for your circle. The people that you bring to your circle should be those that could be your therapist, that could be your mentors, that could be your encouragers, your, your number one fans, right? And as soon as you find a person like that, you need to bring them closer to you because it's the oxygen that you need to continue to keep fighting this life that sometimes is so unfair. So you are responsible for that. And so, yes, Frank, I, I love, uh, you're part of that. You know, you're part of that in my life. I've only known you for, for, you know, a very short amount of time, but I already consider you as a person that I want in my circle, a person that I would definitely pick up the phone and start typing or start calling and say, hey, you know, I'm going through this. What do you think? Why? Because I know that your response is going to be either encouraging, mentoring, um, or praising, right? And that's what I need at that moment in, in time. And you never know when people need to hear a good answer, you know? And I get it. We all tend to be negative sometimes. We all tend to be devil's advocate. And especially when we're going through hurt and pain, our responses are very hard going to be positive. But if you always find the positive in the negative is what's going to keep you fueling that vehicle to keep mo moving forward. So today I can tell you, Frank, thank you for being my friend. Obviously, your brother, I adore your brother, my BFF. <laughs> and, um, you know, anytime, anytime I need something, I know that you guys are some of the people that I can go to. So for that, I thank you. Um, and getting back to, to, you know, our topic of today, you know, that's part of your vision. And that's also part of your plan. How do you execute that dream that you want? So my dream is to um, raise $1 billion a year um, for charity. That's that's been in my in my dream board um, for years, um, and I know it's a huge dream. I know I may never accomplish it, um, but guess what? Every day that I look at my dream board, every month, every quarter, every year, every lifetime that I've looked at it since I've had it, it reminds me of on what I do. It reminds me of what I got to continue to keep doing. So, you know, my dream is huge, right? My dream is, 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 is probably very ambitious. And will I ever get to that point? I hope I do, because I'm going to make sure that my vision always has that in it. That my vision of whatever my year is going to look like, my month, my quarter is going to look like, it's always there. Then we go into a plan. That's the technicality of it, right? What do you need to do to be able for your vision to play out and your dream to eventually be fulfilled? So with that said, you create a plan. That plan needs to be concise, needs to be very detailed on what you got to do. You know, if you're in the business of selling you know, how many people do you need to offer your product? How many people do you need to talk to on a monthly basis, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis for you to fulfill those numbers, right? If you're, if, if you're in the business of counseling, you know, how many patients do you need to talk to? 
how many people do you need to actually exercise those talks with in order for you to fulfill the amount of people that you want to help? If you're in, um, you know, I don't know, the, the, the social media world, if you're, a, if you're a public personality, if you're a, an artist, if you're a public figure, how many lives are you going to touch? You know, if you're a millionaire, a billionaire, a trillionaire, how many people are you going to be able to give back to? So every dollar that you give out, 10 times that dollar will come back to you in blessings. Maybe not in the form of money, but maybe in the form of blessings. So again, what is your purpose? What is your dream? What is your vision? Put a plan together. And the most important, the most important ingredient of this recipe, how are you going to execute that? How, what is your game plan on executing exactly what you set your plan out to be? And you know what? What are your reasons? Why are you doing why are you doing this? You know, when you're an entrepreneur and you're in the in the leadership world and you're, you know, in the sales world, we talk a lot about your whys and your reasons. Well, those are supposed to be just little reminders, you know, your little, mm, I would say your little uh, alarm reminders, right, of why it is that you're going through what you're going through. You know, I'll tell you a story about a person who um, was actually at one point in my life, one of my mentors, you know, because you are supposed to be changing mentors as you go along, as you grow, you're supposed to bring on people that are going to stretch you, not just cheerly you, but actually stretch you to the next level. So at this point, um, you know, this person was, uh, was very important in my life because it was the only person that was giving me advice on, um, you know, my relationship. And it was somebody who I trusted, somebody who had a proven record of, um, you know, a successful marriage. And so obviously um, they, because I would say they, because it was the couple, but especially him, um, you know, he became one of my mentors in, in a lot of what I did in my relationships. And uh, I remember going through, through a lot of pain with them when the time came for the adversity to hit them. And uh, there was one point where instead of them being my mentors and them sharing the information that they may end their own marriage, I turned around and I applied everything everything they had actually taught me. I applied it. I executed it. And I went back and I reminded them of every time that they gave me an advice, every time that they gave me an encouraging word, or every time that they praised me for something great that I had done in my, in my own life and my own relationships. Um, I went back and I, and I told them, I said, don't give up. Don't, you know, why is it that you got married in the first place? Why is it that you had children? Do you remember that? And, you know, we went through going back through that again. And uh, I'm not saying that I'm the one to help them save their marriage. But, you know, today they've been married 40 plus years. And did they hit that adversity? Absolutely. You know, they hit it too. The devil works 24 hours a day to try to get into what's good. And so when that started happening and I was able to be that person in their circle, instead of saying, oh yeah, girlfriend, leave them. Or yeah, you should leave her. No, it was no, 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 no. I don't know what you're going through. I, cause I'm not in your life. I don't know both true stories cause I'm not participating in what's going on in the day to day. But what I can tell you is what you gave me when I needed it. And what you gave me is exactly this. So I'm going to remind you so you can execute your own advice. Right? So don't forget that. You know, a lot of us are really good about giving advice, but we're not really good about executing our own advice. So, um, 
you know, with that, I can tell you these four things have been what keeps me focused. Uh, now, I think I shared with you guys, I'm going to show you a little bit of, um, you know, what I've been sharing on social media and stuff because it's it's very important, right? So I said, don't forget why you started, you know, why you started whatever it is that you're starting, whether you have a business, whether you have a little blog or whether you have, um, you know, a new job or whether you have a new relationship. Don't forget why you started. And if you need to write that down, if you need to write it down and post it somewhere or put it on your phone as your screensaver or, or do whatever you, you need to do, just get it done. Get it done today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Get it done today. Put it on your to-dos and don't forget why you started. We have 365 days of 2021. Four of them have already kind of gone by. And so don't wait till tomorrow. Write down why you started whatever it is that you started. And you can, you can um, you know, itemize it by relationship, finances, business, you know, career, um, whatever it is that you want to focus on this year. And don't lose sight of your vision. You know, once you have a vision of how your life or how your game plan is going to be. Do not lose sight of it. Plaster it all over. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it on your mirror in your bathroom. Put it next to your bed. Put it on your ceiling. Put it on your phone. Put it everywhere. Write it down on your calendar. Write it down on your journal. You know, I, of course, have, you know, an awesome journal, and I'll show it to you over here on the side so you guys can see it. You know, I started the journal of self journal and that's thanks to my mentor, Bill Mitchell. And I, you know, adore him for giving us this type of tools to go by because after reading the guidebook and after reading what it can accomplish for us on having a self journal, I am in love. So thank you, Bill, for that if you're watching. Um, but, you know, it all starts with don't forget to dream. Don't forget to continue to dream. Don't forget to be a kid again. You know, we go in life just trying to get this done and trying to, trying to, uh, you know, be so perfect. Um, and part of the execution is finding things that are going to motivate you, that are going to motivate you to, um, you know, say, hey, how do I execute this? So I'm starting the book, The 12 Week Year. Of course, these two items were, um, you know, recommended by one of my biggest mentors uh, and somebody who, you know, has walked the walk. And uh, obviously, I'm going to listen to him. Right, Bill? You know who you are. And uh, I adore him for giving me these tools because I'm already like in the third chapter in one day of the 12 week year and I am hooked. And guess what? It may or may not work for me, but I'm definitely going to listen and I'm definitely going to plan to execute it and I'm going to execute it the best of my knowledge. So with that said, I can tell you, don't just say you're going to do it. Do it. Every adversity, every obstacle that comes your way can be fought with a good vision, a good plan, and a good execution. Now, let's talk about the last thing that I want to share with you because we're about to end our show for today. And the last thing is, what if it doesn't work? I know that the what ifs are terrible. I know that a lot of people go around, well, what if, what if, worrying about this, worrying about that. Well, guess what? Of course, you can execute a plan, you can, you can visualize and you can dream something that's going to look like this. So I want to thank Daniel Chavez for posting this on social media today because I'm stealing it because I'm going to show you this. You can have a plan, that's for sure. But check this out. Reality and life will take you this way. So yes, you're going to have a plan. You're going to have that end uh, flag that is going to be your dream. It's going to be your vision. 
But the reality is you're going to hit the barriers. You're going to hit reality. You're going to go through that plan. It's going to be to the right, to the left, to the top, to the bottom. You're going to hit fires. You're going to hit obstacles. You're going to hit spider webs. You're going to hit every adversity possible. But guess what? You always have the opportunity to start over. So with that said, the restart button is one of my favorites. So when I tell you to keep going, when I tell you that you have to fight this, that, you, that if you're going through adversity, you create a plan to execute it. Everybody's going through that. It's how your mentality is, the people you surround yourself with, and the things that you choose to listen to on a daily basis. So dream, vision, plan, execute. And if it fails, press the restart button. You're never too old and it's never too late to push the restart button. When you make a mistake, press the restart button. When you've done somebody wrong, press the restart button. When you didn't succeed, at what you wanted to succeed in, press the restart button. With that said, we'll end our show for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you're watching it live or if you're watching it later, just know that this comes from my heart. And we'll see you next Monday at 1215 with a great, amazing guest that I have in store for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way.